Well, I got my butt kicked in the last episode. Now it's a little personal. So, we're at Walmart today. I know we're at Walmart again. It's gonna take me five seconds to go in here, so don't even skip through. We, we were actually in Atlanta today. Um, I was in Savannah when I got my butt kicked. So we're gonna be giving it a try. And we're gonna wear the bats out. I'm telling you, I ain't playing no games today. We're gonna catch some big ones. This is the second door. <laughs> it's too early. That's the second door I tried. I tried that one. No. Tried this one. No. I guess I gotta walk all the way down here. So anyways, we're getting back. <laughs> I can't even talk. <laughs> We're getting some big bass baits today. I'm coming in here because I just want to make sure I got everything I need. I'm telling you guys, I'm a little mad about last episode. We got to get the revenge going. We got to show you guys some big bass. It's been a little bit. So we got to see what they got in the fishing section and see what I think's going to catch the donkeys today. So that's exactly what we're doing, man. Six in the morning right now. We're going to see if we can make it happen. Probably going to get some jigs, some chatter baits, some trailers. Maybe even a big worm. You know, I'm, I'm really debating on what we go with today, but let's go ahead and see what they got. As you guys can tell, the fishing section is a lot bigger than the one in Savannah. I can tell you that. The one here in Atlanta has a, a lot more stuff, including these like 15 inch watermelon, grape, strawberry, blueberry, blackberry worms right here. So options, options, options. So last time I grabbed some of these missile baits, last time I was here, and I kind of I liked them, man. I kind of I messed with them. I might need to get some of these for the jigs today, okay? And then we're gonna get some of these rage swimmers. I got them last time. There was some juice. They fit pretty well on the chatterbait. I liked what I saw there. Then obviously for the jigs, I got a few in my car, but I might want to pick up a few backups. But they don't have much here. Like not, not like big, bulky, heavy jigs, which is kind of what I need. I mean, they do, but not in black and blue. See this small, small. Ooh, they do right here, the pro models, okay. We're gonna get two of the pro models and then ooh, that is three eight. That's three eighth two, okay. Two chatterbaits. So two pro models, two chatterbaits. That's why I'm black and blue. Hold up. Some dude just hawked me down right now. I mean straight just hawking me down. Those are the black and blues. Two of those. Two chatterbaits, two jigs, trailers for the jigs, trailers for the chatterbaits. Now maybe we want something to spice it up. I don't really know. I think we might leave it at that, honestly. I think that's gonna be good. I got some more stuff in the cars. Chatter baits and jigs. Big bass baits. They catch the big ones. I promise. You. They just do. So that's what we're gonna go with. Now let's go fishing. We actually made it to the pond. Let me kind of show you what we're working with today. As you guys can tell down there, we came here about a week, maybe two weeks ago. Beautiful pond, got a spillway that comes down at the bottom. Just overall a really beautiful pond. I know there's some big bass in here. Broke off a six pounder on the first cast last time and also caught two quality fish. So we ended up buying two baits at Walmart, a jig and a chatter bait. We're gonna be starting off with the chatter bait today just to cover some water, use a moving bait and see if there's some activity. I actually see a lot of movement down there. I'm already getting super excited, but we're gonna start with the chatterbait, cover some water, and see if we can get one of these big bass to bite. So let's go ahead and tie that on. Always check, make sure you don't have any frays, which I do. Always check that before fishing, you never know. See this phrase right there? That's not good. All right, we should be good about right there. Always check that before fishing. You never want to break off on a big fish like like I do a lot. <laughs> Z-Man chatterbait. Chatter donkey right here. This is a big bass slayer. This is definitely one of my top three baits of all time. If not my number one favorite bait of all time, especially for shallow water. Cut the tag in. I used these for the first time on a chatterbait like two weeks ago. And the action that it put out, it had a very wide wobble and I really liked it. Because when I fish a chatterbait, I'm mainly fishing for big bass. So I really like this wide wobble that this was putting out the last time. It's not the perfect color to pair up with this, but it actually ends up fitting very well. I'll show you. Look at this. Look, I mean, 
at the end of the day look how sexy that looks i mean it really does pair up very well on that black and blue i was, I was actually lying there <laughs> that looks very good always clean up all your trash guys when you're fishing don't ever litter all right it's time all right let's see what this chatterbait can do last time i was here like i was saying first cast i broke off a six pounder at the bank i literally saw him he's anywhere between five to six pounds let's see let's see how this goes today always check your drag that's one thing i want to say okay we're good to go oh my gosh he hit me so hard my line went to the right already that was crazy right there one slammed me right there uh oh got him small guy that was one that was out there schooling he loaded up on this it was the weirdest bite ever he's not big at all okay I'll take that right there. For the start off the day, it's never a small bass. It does not matter. Whenever you catch your first fish of the day, that is just the best thing. Whether he's big or small. You know, this guy's small, but look at the colors and just straight pretty bass. All the markings on him are awesome. You can tell he hasn't been up in this grass just because of the light color that he has. If we were to catch one out of this thick slop right here, you'd notice that they would have a darker green tint on them. As you guys can tell, this guy's a little bit lighter. He's been out there schooling and chasing some bait this morning. Let's get him back in the water. Thank you for biting, buddy. Oh yeah. There we go, first fish today on the chatterbait. Little bit of schooling action, I threw it out there. I did it different this time though. Before I was just throwing the chatterbait out there and I was reeling it steady right back in. This time, I actually threw it out just like this. I let it hit the bottom and I started stroking it up and that's when that fish just grabbed it. You know what would probably work this morning is a trap. And I actually do have some traps in my car. If I keep seeing a lot of action like this and I can't eat them, get them to eat this, I might end up going back to my car and grabbing a trap. I'm gonna actually make a run back to my truck I'm going to grab that trap box. I'll be right back. So I don't want something too big, but I do want something that's very realistic. It's going to have more of a subtle wobble, especially this time of year. That bad boy is more of a smaller trap. Looks like a baby bait fish I would be in most of these ponds. It's got a lot of color on them, but I think that guy will do the trick. Actually more of just a straight natural color it's got a little bit of translucent look at that right there that that is a very pretty lipless crankbait this one right here is not going to be like your bigger ones like this your regular rattle traps um like your two taps by strike king your one knockers by booyah which is this one right here there's another one right there that one actually hmm that's a tough decision actually we're gonna put this guy down we're gonna grab this one knocker by Booyah. Or this is actually an Excalibur, this is my last one. This is a very, they don't even make these anymore, put it that way. If you wanna buy them nowadays, you gotta pay 30 bucks on eBay. Those are some juice. Natural color, sexy shad with some chrome, blue on the top, got the yellow chartreuse stripe down the middle, red eyes, beautiful looking rattle trap. I want you guys to see this. I got a tiny fray right at, right at my line. Uh-oh. Oh no! He came right out of that grass and just hammered me. He's running to the left with it. Oh boy, oh boy. Let's go, let's go. Whew. 
what a long wait. That was so surprising. Oh my gosh. Did you guys hear the way when I hooked it, the, the line went right in the top of the lip. Perfect. A little chunky guy, nothing bad. Heck yeah, that's a beautiful little fish. And like I said, man, pretty colors on these things. They're just so healthy out here. You can tell they eat out here. And uh, you know, they're taking care of, there's a lot of bait. You got a bunch of vegetation and a bunch of cover. So pretty bass, there we go. It's been a minute, man. I was getting a little scared. He was right here on this grass line. I, mean, I was just walking and casting and boom, pretty bass. All right, everyone, I'm actually at a new pond right now. This is just a little tiny pond. This is actually the first pond I used to come here with my grandfather years ago. This is actually where I started bass fishing. My first time ever bass fishing was right here at this pond. So that's pretty good. I actually tied on a popper that I found in my car. It's a little Magnum popper. And we're gonna see if we can get a bite on it. Yes, I'm throwing on fluorocarbon. That's all I have with me right now. Um, long story about my uh, braided rod. Uh, I, I currently don't have it. You guys will find out why hopefully soon, but let's see if we can get hit on this popper. God. Dude, that was insane. He's not even big. That was insane. He choked it. Holy cow, he choked it. Look at that. He came out of nowhere and just slammed that sucker. He was camping out right next to these brim beds right here on the bank. See, when you picture a beautiful largemouth bass, that's exactly what you think of. I mean, just look at the colors on this thing. The green's popping out. Oh, that's awesome right there. Nothing big, man, but I will take them for the first fish in this pond. Boom. Uh oh. He ain't big. Never mind. Never mind. I skipped right up under that tree, though. Another beautiful one, man. The colors on these bass are awesome. Straight awesome. Look at that. That is great. That is great right there. Uh oh, he's got me. Figured out how to catch him out there. I'm gonna tell you guys, I ain't a good one. What am I saying? <laughs> he ain't a bad one. It's the biggest one out of this place yet. He ain't a good one though. I thought he was at least two, two and a half. When he jumped, he looked like it. Let's get this fish back in the water. See, this one's a little lighter. He's not as green as the other ones. He's been out there. He hasn't been up shallow and all this stuff. And man, I figured out how to get him to bite out there. I'm gonna sit here and show you. Let's get a release on this guy. So I've talked about it before in many of my other videos. Throw the chatterbait out there. This is why this bait's so versatile. And, and it really is, you know, a lot of people say it isn't, but it really is. You can just hop this thing on the bottom just like a jig, especially when you're in some very muddy water. This black and blue chatterbait is going to be good in it. And then you actually have the blade on it. All right. You get the blade on the chatterbait putting out vibration. But something about this pond that I noticed the cast before I started working it this way. And the reason I started doing it is because maybe I put this chatterbait right next to the bank. Okay. And I, I let it hit the bottom and I kind of like popped it. And I saw what it was doing. Here, let me show you a little closer. You might be able to see this. You might not. Okay. Chatterbait's hopping in the water. I don't know if you guys see that, but a bunch of dirt is getting stirred up and i was like maybe they want something popping in the bottom like that flaring up all that dirt and, and that's exactly what i did the next cast i beamed it out there boom he picked it up let's see if we can duplicate that yep uh oh oh yeah that's a good now that's a good one holy cow yes yes sir Yes, sir. God, dog. Oh, look at that. Oh, he's pulling drag. Oh, he's pulling drag. He is strong. He's pissed. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Let's go. Gosh, that's a beautiful fish. Solid two. Oh, he, ain't, he ain't that two and a half, but he's, he's got a thick belly on him. 
Gosh, did you guys see him pulling? Right when I said that, next cast out there. We just figured these fish out right here in the middle. They want that dirt flared up on the bottom and also the vibration of that chatterbait. If we switch over to a big jig, they might not end up eating it. Maybe that vibration and that tail fluttering is what's making them commit. But look at the belly on that thing. It's definitely a thick fish. Not a absolute giant, but he is, a, that is a quality hefty fish. If you guys could put him in your hands, you'd realize how heavy he was, but. Oh, that's awesome. Let's get him back. Now I'm done with all you said. All you wanted was my brain.